Welcome back to another AP Chemistry General Chemistry video. Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're learning more about acids and bases. Now specifically, we're learning about strong acids versus weak acids and how to determine uh, what a stronger acid versus a weaker acid would be. Now, to get started here, when we talk about the strength of an acid, it specifically refers to the percentage dissociation of an acid. You know, if the acid breaks apart 100%, goes all the way, or if it just breaks apart, you know, some of the way, 5%, 10%, even less than that. Now, strong acids, as we've already learned in this course, are 100% dissociated. So that means that they break apart all the way. They don't have any uh, undissociated compound left in solution. There are only six strong acids that you need to know about for AP Chemistry. These are the six strong acids. And if you've been following through this course from the very beginning, you've probably seen these before. We have hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and perchloric acid. Now you need to know those six. You need to know just by looking at an acid formula if it's strong or weak. And if you see one of those six, you know it's strong. If it's an acid and it's not one of those six, you know it's weak. So you're going to have to be able to recognize that. You know, most acids are well under 100% dissociated. In fact, most acids are way under even 5% dissociated. Those are called the weak acids, and we'll work more with those in the next lesson. But for now, we just need to know the difference between the strong and the, the weak acids. Now, how about the bases? Well, we talk about the strength of bases. It's very similar. The strength of a base specifically refers to how dissociated that base is. So there's some bases strong bases, we call them, that are 100% dissociated. They break apart into their component ions all the way. They, they, they break all of their ions, all of their uh, uh, compound apart into ions. And as far as we know in AP chemistry, is uh, there are only eight of those. And you, you do need to know those eight strong bases. These are basically the group one and two hydroxides that are soluble. So that would be lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide, those are your group ones, and then calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, and strontium hydroxide. So those are your soluble group two hydroxides as well. You need to know those. If you see anything else that's a base, it's going to be a weak base. Well, it's pretty much the same case with acids, isn't it? Most bases are well under 100% dissociated, usually less than 5%. Those are the weak bases. So once again, one skill that you need to be able to have, a fundamental skill here, is being able to differentiate between a strong acid and a strong base, or uh, between a strong acid and a weak base, right? Or a strong acid and a weak acid, and a strong base and a weak base. So be able to do that because sometimes on homework problems, they're given uh, you are given several compounds and you have to decide if it's a strong acid, a weak acid, a strong base, or a weak base. Now, when we talk about why acids are strong or weak, this goes into something that we've already learned about in this class, and that's Coulomb's Law. So here I have a diagram of four of the hydrogen halides. So I have hydrogen bonded to fluorine, hydrogen bonded to chlorine, and the same thing with bromine and iodine. Now, we know that three of those are strong acids, right? Because I just told you so, right? We've learned that already in this course. Why are these three over here strong acids, but HF is not a strong acid? Well, it has to do with Coulomb's Law. If we just look at these, we can see that uh, that between the hydrogen and iodine atoms, there's a large distance between the atoms. Because of that, there's a lower attraction. And so this, these compounds, or this compound is able to dissociate so much more, and that makes it a stronger acid. And so that's why this is a strong acid. You know, this may, there may be a, somewhat of a, a stronger attraction, but it still dissociates. Uh, so does HCl. 
But how about HF? The distance is much smaller, isn't it? Those atoms are much closer to each other, and as a result, there's a greater attraction, and so that compound does not dissociate as much. That's what makes it a weaker acid. And so we can think about the uh, distance uh, and the, uh, the fact that that has to do with acid strength. And so that's, a, that's something that some, sometimes could come up on an essay, like on an AP exam or something. Now, an important rule of thumb that you need to know about is the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. That's worth repeating. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So here we have some really strong acids up here like HI and HCl. And take a look at their conjugate bases, I negative and Cl negative. And these are like the, almost the strongest acids you can have. Well, guess what? These two over here are extremely weak bases. In fact, they're so weak, we, we could call them uh, uh, pathetic bases. They could not attract an H plus to save their lives, if you want to put it that way. Okay, they are awful at attracting H pluses. Now, as we get weaker acids, like HF is a is kind of weaker, isn't it? Well, guess what? That means F minus is a little bit stronger of a base. It's able to attract H plus is better. And as we go down here, we get weak acids. You know, HCN is a, a weaker acid. Water is a, a fairly weak acid too, isn't it? Well, guess what? Since water is a weak acid, its conjugate base, hydroxide, is actually quite strong, isn't it? It's able to attract H pluses very easily. And how about some extremely weak acids. I mean, CH4 is, I mean, we barely even consider that an acid, don't we? But if it is a weak acid at all, it would be a pathetic acid. And guess what? Its conjugate base, CH3 uh, uh, negative, is actually very strong. It's an extremely strong base. And th th these will attract H pluses very easily. And so that's a rule of thumb that you need to know about. The stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base, and the converse is true as well, the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. Now there's some other ways to think about this. If you want to think about it this way, you can imagine this as a competition for H plus protons. And so if we want to think of it in this way, we could have water as a base, and HCl is an acid, so that means that water is a base, and Cl negative is a base as well. It's a, it's a conjugate base in this equation. And they're basically competing for protons. They would both really like to steal a proton from somebody, right? Water's trying to steal one from HCl, and Cl negative is trying to steal one from, from, uh, from hydronium. Well, guess what? Water is a much a better thief of protons in this case. It steals them very well. But guess what? Chloride is an awful thief of hydrogen ions. It can't attract H pluses at all. It's a pathetic base. It could not attract a proton to save its life. On the other hand, down here, if we want to think about this reaction, we have a different acid. This is a weak acid. And so we have water also acting as a base. And that means that nitrite is acting as a conjugate base. And once again, there's a competition here. Water would like to steal a proton from nitrous acid, and nitrite would like to steal a hydrogen ion from hydronium. And guess what? In this case, nitrite is much better at stealing H pluses than water is. And in terms of equilibrium, that's why this equilibrium lies very far to the left. You know, this is what's called a weak acid because this conjugate base is pretty good at uh, taking those H pluses, whereas water is not. On the other hand, this is a strong acid because water is very good at stealing those H pluses from the uh, HCl, whereas chloride is awful at that. And so if, the, if there is an equilibrium here, it would lie very far to the right in all practical purpose for all practical purposes though there really is no equilibrium because this goes a hundred percent all the way to the right and so there's not a whole lot of a reverse reaction to even deal with 
Now, there are some other rules for the strength of acids that you do need to know about in AP Chemistry. One of them is if you have acids with an H, an oxygen, and some other atom, which we can call X, the more electronegative that X is, the stronger the acid. Now, you're not given an electronegativity chart on the AP exam, but if you, know, if you remember that toward the top and right, atoms are more electronegative, that will usually be enough to, uh, to help you out there. And the way this works is, if something is electronegative, it means that, th that the electrons are actually drifting, they're pulled toward that electronegative atom, which allows the H plus to just pop off, basically. So, so in this example, we're being asked to arrange these acids from strongest to weakest. So let's try this. Now, remember, the strongest acid is going to be the one that has the most electronegative of the little uh, tails on the end here. So we have an H and O and then this other tail. So that most electronegative is the fluorine, isn't it? So that's going to be the strongest acid. So we'll arrange that first. Now the one that's next would be chlorine. It's a little bit farther down on the halogen scale. So HOCl would be the one in the middle. And then iodine has the lowest electronegativity of those three halogens. So HOI would be the weakest. So we can arrange these in order from strongest to weakest by looking at electronegativities. Here's another rule for acid strength. If we have an acid that has an H, one or more oxygen atoms, and then one other atom X, if the atom X is the same thing in all of them, well, the more oxygens it has in the acid, the stronger the acid's gonna be. Now, the way that works is that oxygen itself is a highly electronegative atom. So these electrons are gonna to drift toward that electronegative oxygen, and it's gonna allow the hydrogen to just uh, uh, pop off. So here's an example here, once again. We arrange the following acids from strongest to weakest. And they all have hydrogen, they all have the same uh, halogen, they all have chlorine in them, but they have different numbers of oxygens. So according to what we just learned, the one that has the most oxygens, everything else being equal, will be the strongest. So that means that this perchloric acid here is going to be the strongest. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because perchloric acid is actually one of our six strong acids. Well, HClO2 has a little bit less oxygen, so that's going to be a little bit weaker. And then HOCl is going to be the weakest acid, the hypochlorous acid there. So hopefully you can see how that works. More oxygen, stronger, less oxygen, weaker. Let's take a look at one more rule here. And this is the strength of weak organic acids. Now, in this course in AP Chemistry, we try to avoid organic as much as possible because organic does not appear on the AP exam much, but this particular part could. Weak organic acids are called carboxylic acids. And the way that works is you'll see a carbon double bonded to an oxygen, and then that carbon is also single bonded to an OH. We call that a hydroxyl group. Not really hydroxide, it's a hydroxyl in organic chemistry. And then there's this other uh, stuff here that we call R. And that group, R, tells us how strong the acid is. The more electronegative the atoms in this R group, the stronger it is. So the way that works is electrons will drift toward that more electronegative atom in R. You know, that drifts over and it allows the H over here to just uh, pop off and leave. So let's try a few examples here. And the first example has one just like that. So in each pair of compounds, which is the stronger acid? So in the first example here, we have, a, we have a pair of carboxylic acids, and we have a fluorine here, which is highly electronegative. So that means that this is going to be the stronger acid. Remember, highly electronegative means, you know, stronger acid if it's organic. How about this one here, HOBr versus HOCl? The more electronegative is going to be stronger acid, and that would be the Cl in this case. So there's our answer. How about part C? Once again, more oxygens means it's a stronger acid. So H2SO3 
versus H2SO4, more oxygens means it's stronger. Now, part D is kind of a tough one, isn't it? Which one is the stronger acid? There are a couple ways to think about this. Um, if we want to think about an acid as being something that competes for uh, H pluses, is nitrate going to be able to uh, uh, attract or be a good donator of, of uh, hydrogen ions? Well, no. In fact, since it's the product of a, um, of a, a strong acid, it's not going to be able to donate anything, is it? So it's, it's, that's an awful example of an acid. On the other hand, water is a better example of an acid, isn't it? it it's, it's still going to be weak, but it can still donate protons much better than uh, this one can. So water would be the stronger acid in this case. Well, we've worked through several examples here. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have, if you'd be so kind as to hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. That way, YouTube recommends my chemistry videos to other students. Once again, my name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP Chemistry for over 20 years, and I want you to get a five and an A in your AP Chemistry class and on your exam. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry together.